The Department of Homeland Security just released a list of the greatest threats that America faces, and it's Russia, China, China, and white supremacists in the United States. And I saw that on Twitter, and I responded to the person who posted it. Um, the greatest threat to the United States is the United States government. The reason I said this is because of technology, because um, there are people that have established positions in the government that give them a lot of power. And they're not billionaires, they're not famous, they're just people with regular jobs, but they don't have regular jobs, they have access to the government's top secret servers. And so um, they have access to technology that normal people don't have access to. Because when we, when we talk about the government spending billions of dollars every year uh, spying on people, the, the domestic surveillance budget is like $60 billion. So when we talk about that, what are they? What, what is that money being spent on? Well, a lot of it's being spent on software, and you're talking about a lot of very talented coders that are that are working in certain directions. And one direction is um, natural language processing and big data. And so, say that I have the ability to hack your cell phone, and um, I can record every conversation you have near your cell phone or near your computer, and I have classified your voice based on the way that your voice sounds, based on just the, the sound waves have a specific thing about them. So anytime you have a, have, have a conversation near anybody's cell phone, I can record it and I'll store it on a server. And I'll store it in string format and characters. So say that I want to go through that data and find out anytime you've ever talked about drugs, or that the, the data ever thought that you were doing drugs. Say, say that I wanna extract all those memories. Say that I wanna go through the data and find out every time you had sex. Can I do that? Um, I can try. Uh, I can write a program that's pretty good that can search through your words. Um, I can definitely um, classify all of your conversations based on the morality of it, like based on whether or not I can blackmail you with that information. And that's why um, I'm telling you guys, uh, big data is scary. And you know who's actually scarier? The United States military, um, it, which the reason the United States military is scary is because of big data, beta, big data but that's not it. It's, it's the leadership. And I know that everyone's going, oh my gosh, He's gonna get murdered, and that's that's what I'm thinking every time. The moment I start talking about the United States military, uh, like I know I was talking about big data before, which the United States military is like behind big data. Like they are like NSA people. That's the thing when you hear about the NSA, it's always like a general, General Alexander, General Hayden, General Nakasone. It's always military, and I don't think people realize that. But these military people. Um, why are they scary? Is it because of the big data or is it because they're kind of nuts? I mean, seriously, um, think of it this way. If the Catholics have worked that hard to get seven out of nine sp Supreme Court justices on the Supreme Court and a guy who's running for president right now, who's Catholic, and Catholics in all these federal judge positions, do you think there are Catholics in the intelligence community? And it's not just Catholics, I'm talking about religious nuts. Like, do you, like, okay, so when you apply for a job with the government, can you have used marijuana? Not for like a year. Like if you've used marijuana for a year, you're automatically disqualified from having a job working for the government. If you've used like Molly or ecstasy, can you have a job working for the government if you've done it like two years ago? No, I'm pretty sure you can't have a job working for the government unless you haven't done Molly for five years. So is the federal government automatically like, leaning towards prudish people, people that don't experiment, people that are not intellectually curious, people who aren't very creative. Because wait, wait, are you saying that not doing drugs means that you're not creative? I'm just saying it's it means that you're not the type of person that wants to experiment with life. And so we have a mandatory requirement that if you are in the government, you have to have not experimented with life. And so it's like, all right, dude, 
do you realize that like there's a like when you think about a government employee, there is something about them and that something about them is that they judge you if you've done drugs. They've judged you if you're if you're bad, if you're a criminal, if you break the law in like in a way that is not like there's a I, I just read about a guy who was who got in trouble for five grams of cocaine in Russia and he's doing ten years he's he's about to do ten years in prison. And I was like, holy crap like I mean, but that's because Vladimir Putin's one of those people too. Vladimir Putin's nuts. He he's not someone that has empathy. He's not someone that cares about he he only cares about people that are like himself. And and I'm just saying, the people in the government the people that are willing to blackmail and, and do terrible things to keep their control over the technology that they have. I'm telling you, they, they, the government has technology that the American people don't have. These people have technology you don't have, and that's one of the reasons you should be afraid of them. But the real reason you, sh you should be afraid of them is because they're a bunch of Amy Coney Barrett's. And Amy Coney Barrett is very good looking, she's very good at school, and she's retarded. Pardon me, but dude, if you don't realize that, if you don't realize that you're purposely doing it when you do it, because when you speak in tongues, you have to knowingly do it. And so all I'm saying is I know what speaking in tongues is because I did it and I know that I was full of shit when I did it and I know that it convinced me to not do it anymore, not because I, I knew I was full of shit, but because of the faith healing services where no one got healed but we all believe in healing. So, uh, but it's not, I'm just saying like, these are the people that are in charge of very, very, very dangerous technology. These are people that their job is lying. The CIA, their job is lying. They are actors. It's, it's a game to them, but I'm just saying like they are career liars. Like, and, and, and that's what I mean. I understand everyone thinks CIA is so great. I want to be CIA. I'm just saying they're career liars. And if you, if you don't understand that, then you don't understand what the CIA does. Their job is lying about who they are constantly. So like, I mean, the government, all these undercover agents, they're career liars. Their whole lives are, their whole lives are lies. And so they're like very devout Christians that are career liars in order to stop drugs. But the Bible doesn't say anything about drugs, but they know it's bad because they have a classification of their morals. Their morals are this way. They are Republican. They're against abortion. They're for the death penalty. They're for war. They're against Islam. They're against gay people. They're for loving people. They think that gay people are infringing upon their religious liberty when gay people get married. The gay people aren't inviting the Christians to come to their wedding. This, this is who these people are. Their belief system is a contradiction. But I'm, I'm, I, I, dude, believe me, I know there are liberals in the government, but all I'm saying is, like, in order to get a job working for the government, you can't have experimented with drugs, which means that you can't be a very, you can't be that liberal. You can't be the type of person that, like, tries things.